Sargassum seaweed is one of the most unique plant species in the ocean. It gathers to form massive seaweed mats that can reach tens of kilometers in size. Drifting in the open ocean, this golden rainforest is key to life throughout the Sargasso Sea. So Bermuda is the only landmass located within the Sargasso Sea. And here it is, the golden rainforest, the sargassum weed for which the sea is named. These seaweed rafts have a fundamental role. They support an astonishing array of marine species, some of which are endemic to this unique ecosystem. It provides the basis of a food chain and habitat that is the cornerstone to all marine life found in the Sargasso Sea. I think I've got a sargassum fish. Get that whole patch there. In this episode, Neil and the Ocean Vet team are on a mission to explore this unique ecosystem. The team's goal is to collect sargassum species for a temporary exhibit at the Bermuda Aquarium. The sargassum environment, even though everything is small, it's very predatory and certain things will eat certain things if you put them in the same tank. So we have to be aware of that. Neil will also explore Bermuda's mangrove swamps to observe its rich biodiversity before heading out onto Bermuda's iconic coral platform to witness the maze of coral structures and stunning marine life. They will also complete a dive on Argus Tower, an old Second World War listening station 20 miles off the shore. Their goal is to learn how all of these environments are connected. I'll do the front, be careful of the tag, because I have the gloves. Finally, the team will satellite tag and release a wahoo. The Ocean Vet team wants to know more about this species' long-range migrations. Out in the ocean, hiding in the weed, the craziest little creature that you ever did see. If you get to find one, you get to make a wish, because this is the magical sargassum fish. We're going out today to collect the little creatures that live in the sargassum weed. The craziest of all is the sargassum fish. They make their living in there, and hopefully we're going to find one together with a bunch of other creatures. We're going out with the legendary collector, Christopher Fluck, who even has a seaweed named after him. We'll talk about that later. Chris Fluke, a.k.a. Flukey, really is a true island legend. He's worked in and around the ocean on various projects for years and was the Bermuda Aquarium's specialist collector. If it's in the ocean, Chris knows where it is and how to catch it. So, Chris, look! Great to meet you, man. What are we doing out here today? We're looking through some of the sargassum mats that are coming through. Uh, this is a really good time for the sargassum. A lot of juvenile fish in it. I'm just going to see what's in it. Um, just show what the true worth of it is. You know, this is floating gold right here. Excellent. Hopefully, I think we can find a sargassum fish, maybe? I hope so, yeah. That'll be golden. On this mission to collect species and explore the sargassum rafts, Neil will have the support of his trusted ocean vet team. They actually don't have that... Choi Amin, the series marine biologist, will manage the samples. Andrew Kirkpatrick will cover underwater filming operations, and Oscar Doyce will be the team's safety diver. On the back of the ocean vet boat, Choi is setting up the transport tanks for any animals collected. OK, so what we're doing here is just prepping our little collection station at the back for the sargassum creatures that we are going to collect. So we've got various size buckets for the various size creatures and uh, even some really small things and a couple different nets as well so we can properly sort and examine our sargassum weed and all the little creatures in it. Yeah, he's floating a little too high. Over the course of this series, the Ocean Vet team have worked on projects designed to help save protect, and understand more about Bermuda's incredible marine wildlife. These guys have been around so long, they actually predate flowers on planet Earth. This is a true living fossil right here. The team's focus on this seemingly insignificant seaweed is born from an understanding that the sargassum ecosystem supports nearly all of the wildlife that the team have worked with. Back on the boat, Neil is heading out with Chris to start looking through the sargassum raft. So there are two particular classes of little creatures that live in this sargassum. There are the transients. Those are the baby dolphin fish, the baby creatures that are going to grow up 
in the protection of the sargassum and then leave to go out and hunt in the open ocean. And then the second set are the endemics. The only place they live is here amongst the shelter of this sargassum raft. And that's the community. We're going to look at both those different types today. We got something in here. So Fluky's seen something. What have we got? Oh, nice. It's a... Oh, wicked, man. A sargassum pipefish. Pull that weed out. You gotta, we're going to pull the weed out just to show you this fish. It's actually a male because it's got, um, it's gravid. It's got, looks like it's got eggs. Now, how's that for a statement? It's a male, it's gravid because it's got eggs. Flucky, can you just turn around and explain that? Why a gravid male fish has eggs? Well, just like with the seahorses, the, the male actually holds the eggs and, uh, and sort of incubates them and they hatch out of the male versus the female holding the eggs. Right. The advantage to that, I guess, in nature would be that the fact that the male tends to be bigger and stronger and has more of a chance of actually getting the eggs to to growth. To maturity. Uh, yeah. So here he is. He looks almost like an eel. He's got a long nose on him. He's very slender. And he looks a little bit like a cross between a seahorse and an eel. And basically what he eats is the little shrimps and the little crabs out of the sargassum. So they live their entire life in the sargassum eating nothing but crab and shrimp. So so we're not going to put him in a bucket with anything small that he might eat on the way home, right? Exactly. Do you want to keep him in this one? Yeah. It's these tiny fish that start a food chain that ends up supporting top ocean predators. But the seaweed's importance to the ecosystem goes much further than that. As fish on the coral platform spawn, the eggs drift out into the ocean and hatch. Once they're fish, they find refuge inside these rafts, then swim back to the reefs once they are capable of avoiding the bigger reef predators. It's fundamental as a food chain, but it's also fundamental to the life cycle of other fish that live in completely different habitats. No, there's two fish. There's two fish on this plastic right here. We're going to try and catch them right now. Catching these tiny fish is not as easy as it sounds. Chris decides to use a small seine net to improve their chances. Success! We have all three of the fish that were hiding under this piece of plastic trash. So you got an old, like, maybe a fishing bin or something like that, an old tub that's broken up and fallen overboard. There's so much algae and stuff has grown on this um, that it's basically made a, a, a floating house for these things. But it's just a shame that it's plastic as opposed to what's supposed to be here, the sargassum. Chris has got him. There's our first one. Oh, Baby, beautiful. Juvenile rainbow fish. runner. Look at that. This is almost like lucky dip. You get to plunge into here and you never know quite what you're going to find. Chris's net technique has been a success. Neil and Chris now have several different sargassum species ready for transfer to the ocean vet boat. So I'm going to give you these bigger specimens. Sure. Those are the going oh, alive yeah. well. Got some chubs, some little rainbows. That's great. Then these guys are the pipefish. Yeah. Oh, that's a good sized pipefish. So we'll Excellent. keep them in one of the uh, gray tanks. Yeah. Choi moves the specimens into the transport containers, where he has the first chance to have a look at what they have on board. Now, right here, we've got a Bermuda chub. That's the small guy. You can see the polka dot pattern. They actually don't have that typically in the adult phase. And I believe that is an adaptation to camouflaging in terms of the sargassum when they are small and this size. When they get bigger, they are more uniform gray traditionally. This is a small triple tail. And this guy here, very interesting fish. This is a tiny one. This is uh, about the smallest I've seen it. They can grow to nearly a foot, also known as a leaf fish. Um, this guy will occasionally, we might see the behavior, he'll come up and lie on his side and disguise himself as a leaf. And he has this sort of patchy modeling coloring through most of his life and easily hides in the sargassum because uh, everything in here designed to camouflage. So that's a great little specimen. With the specimens on board, the team head back to the aquarium. All right, Fluggy, we've got your exhibit. Right next to the first tank there. All right. Triggerfish in. Meet the sergeant majors. These different species are the bases of the sargassum seaweed community. They form the backbone to the ecosystem found within the Sargasso Sea. Just outside are some bigger species Chris caught earlier. So, Flucky, what else have we got in here? 
Well, this is some stuff we got uh, the other day. And here we've got um, squirrel file fish, white spot file fish, plain head file fish, right. ju juvenile amoco jacks. These are a bit too big to go with our small guys that we've got inside because they would certainly have a feast, right? Oh, completely. We would come back in the morning and only have these guys. Yeah. Back. But these are slightly bigger fish that are found in the sargassum. And then, of course, there are predators that will even eat these guys. So it's going to be a great exhibit. Looking forward to it. Completely. Before the team set up the exhibit, they decided to explore some other habitats to see how they're all connected. So we're out here 30 miles offshore, and we're located on Argus Bank. It's about 180 feet deep. But the cool thing is that there is a tower here. The US Navy blew this up over 30 years ago. It was a submarine listening station, and they dropped it in the knowledge that it would act as an artificial reef and accumulate a whole biodiversity of life here. And we're going to go down and look at it. Really exciting dive. All right, you're all set, bud. Yeah. Neil and the team descend down 100 feet to the top of Argus Tower. So this is the Argus Tower. It's exactly how I expected it to be. We're surrounded by pelagic species. We've got barracuda, wahoo, and giant amberjacks. What a fantastic biodiversity we have here. Many of the species Neil and the dive team are watching were once tiny juvenile fish that likely found shelter inside sargassum rafts. It's only because of habitats like the sargassum that stunning ecosystems like this exist. It's a stark reminder of how delicately connected each marine habitat is to another. So now we are coming to the end of our dive. The current's starting to switch. It's time for us to head back up to the surface. It's been a wicked dive. Absolutely phenomenal. Back on land, Neil and the team are about to take a closer look at some of the species they captured during their sargassum search. So we're at the Bermuda Aquarium with some of the creatures that we captured during our recent trip to the sargassum raft. We've got some tremendous equipment here to allow us to get up close and personal with these little guys as they hunt and feed within the sargassum weed. While the team were diving Argus Tower, Chris managed to find a tiny sargassum fish. This species is endemic to the weed and has evolved perfect camouflage to feed on a variety of other fish. It's this feeding behavior the team are hoping to capture. The tension in this room could be cut like a knife right now. Everybody's watching. He could be waiting for a headshot so it gets in there. Yeah, that's what I think he's waiting for. This little sargassum fish is holding himself in position using his pectorals, just like he has two hands. I can see him moving up and down that branch of the sargassum. Oh, it's, yep, you got him, you got him. That little sargassum fish just ingested that chub. The little chub was probably two thirds of his own body length, and yet he managed to ingest him completely in less than a couple of seconds. Fascinating to watch. And now you can see the sargassum fish has gone back into the weed and he's sitting there distended. It's like me eating probably 80 pounds of food in one go. Outside, Choi is preparing the temporary exhibit and some of the children have started to arrive. So what a great opportunity we've got here. All these kids are absolutely fascinated by the sargassum community. Many of them had no idea what they're living in the middle of here in Bermuda. We're the only sea mount in the Sargasso Sea, and this surrounds them every day. So as you look at all this weed and all these organisms, what you've got to realize is that this stuff is so critically important for Bermuda because some of these little tiny fish that live in here, the sergeant majors, they'll actually end up on the reef out here. 
some of these triggerfish end up on the reef out here. So this replenishes Bermuda's reef system. Also, all these little shrimps and things feed the reef fish as they come in here. And then the mangrove swamp does the same thing inshore down at Hungry Bay. And the reef itself nurtures these small fish just in the way the sargassum community. So it's all intertwined for Bermuda. Everything's vital to Bermuda's health. And now, for the health of these little guys, what we're going to do is we're going to load them up in the buckets and we're going to take them back out to sea. Swim free, little guys. They formed their own little school and they're heading back up into the weed where they all started. It's just been a great adventure out here in the Sargasso Sea. Back on the island, Neil and Kirkpatrick are exploring Bermuda's mangrove swamps. So we're here at a World Heritage Site. This is Bermuda's Hungry Bay mangrove swamp. And we're going to explore how these roots and this structure provides the same sort of support for small creatures that the coral reef does and the sargassum weed community does. Cool, ready to go? Yeah, ready to go, Drew. All right, let's get this gear in the water. The mangroves are another unique habitat. Like the sargassum, they provide shelter and food for a variety of different species. But even this border between the ocean and the land has its connection with sargassum seaweed. The tides push sargassum in and pull it back out. In essence, it's like a protective highway transporting species in and out of this habitat. So here we see the sargassum raft has been washed in and has blended in with the mangrove. The sargassum brings in food for all these juvenile fish and provides a safe route back out to the reefs. Bermuda has some of the most stunning coral reef on the planet. It's the most northerly coral reef ecosystem in the world. The scale of this ecosystem, when you consider how tiny the creatures are that make it, is astonishing. Over millions of years, many species have evolved in this gigantic underwater world and many have built links with other habitats, like the sargassum, to assist in their own miniature battle through their life cycle. It has to be, without question, one of Mother Nature's most astonishingly beautiful achievements. The team's final task is to satellite tag a wahoo, a fish close to the top of the sargassum food chain. The data will help the team better protect this fish and its important role inside the sargassum community. So this is very exciting. This is definitely a wahoo. I could see his stripes. We're going to pull him into the stretcher, and we're going to put a PSAT archival tag in this fish if we get him into the boat. OK, so basically, I'm just prepping the station. Neil has the wahoo very close to the boat. So we're going to pull him up onto the boat. I'm going to lift, and you're going to guide his head. Yeah. Lift and pull. Neil and the team are using a pressurized enclosed stretcher designed to hold the fish in place during the tagging procedure. The main thing in keeping this guy alive is having water flow over the gills. Basically, we've got a high pressure well, hose running over. You can see water pumping out the back side of the gill. That keeps them breathing. It's basically almost like a scuba tank for humans, but for fish out of the water. So if you're going diving, you have your tank, you go diving, and you can breathe air. This is so he can respirate out of the water while he's in an opposing environment. So it's kind of cool. I'm seating this tank so it sits just behind this dorsal and trails behind him here. Choi and Neil must work quickly. Wahoo and other pelagic fish are very susceptible to stress. Neil has the tag placed and secured in seconds. So now he's trailing this PSAT archival tag behind his fin. It's going to get in front of his tail. It shouldn't interfere with the movement of his tail as he goes along through the water column. With the tag in place, the team decide to quickly release this fish. Yeah, he is. He's kicking. Yeah, OK. You in? All right, cool. So. You grab the back. I'll do the front. Be careful of the tag, because I have the gloves. So 
I'll take no, the points. Turn around the other way. Yeah, 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 yeah. Good stuff. We're just. And then you're going to slide his head in. We're being very careful of the tire. Yeah. Okay. Three, two, one, go. The data from this tag will allow the team and the Bermuda Department of Fisheries to look at this species' local and long-range movements. The wahoo is economically and ecologically important to the health of the entire Sargasso Sea. By learning more about this individual fish, the team can better protect its future and its important role inside the Sargassum community. Whoa! So, our first pelagic relief. Uh, he swam away. He was a little kicking, a little kicking, and then took off. So I'm sure he's, uh, he's in great shape. This tag released its data three months after deployment and is currently being analyzed by the Bermuda Department of Fisheries. Their aim is to understand its movements to help protect and sustain the species numbers. So what a great adventure, exploring the Sargasso Sea. Bermuda, the only landmass that rises up within it. We've seen mangroves, we've seen coral reefs, we've seen the Argus Tower, we've seen the Sargassum weed community. And now we've seen one of the mightiest fish in the ocean, the wahoo, fastest fish that swims quite probably. And we've put a PSAT archival tag in this fish. We can track him on his adventures around the Sargasso Sea. How cool is that? Next time on Ocean Vet, we go behind the scenes with the Ocean Vet production crew. This is Bermuda, people. It's incredible. We'll be meeting the team that created this incredible series and following them as they use their skills and experience to bring Ocean Vet to life. This is my magic mask. We'll also be speaking with the Ocean Vet team, revealing their best moments, their most dangerous working environments, near misses, and their friendships. Through the eyes of the Ocean Vet team, this episode reveals what it's been like creating this groundbreaking series. Mm -hmm.